read just one verse, verse number 28, Psalm 73, and verse number 28 is what we're looking at. Um, there, there's, there's monitors on both sides. If you don't have a Bible, um, where you can see the word on either side of the, of the, of the sanctuary, amen. Um, Psalm 73 and verse number 28. We conclude our series today, Step Up Your Game, Where Are You? Um, we deal with worship today. Amen. 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 This day we're dealing with, everybody say worship. Worship. We're dealing with worship today. Amen. 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 This should sound for me to the praise team. They, for the last few weeks, have been doing meditations uh, prior to or at some point in their rehearsal and what we talk about today is actually what they would been meditating on each week amen so if y'all hear some mumbling the priest and trying to preach the song with me or something like that amen because they would have some of it psalm 73 and 28 we see they can we say amen amen and it reads as follows but i am close to god and that is good the lord god is my protection I will tell all that you have done. God's word is already blessed. Amen. And so are we. I want to speak today as we conclude our series on worship. I want to speak from this thought. It is time to release. Amen. It is time to release. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God. Amen. It is time to, everybody say release. release. Yeah, it is time to release. It is our prayer on this day, you all, that all of us are blessed that um, the unsaved, and according to the word of God, the unsaved is anyone who has not yet confessed the hope in Jesus Christ. Anyone who's not yet a born again, baptized believer, they fall in the category the Bible defines as one who is unsaved. And all of us know someone who needs to accept Christ as their Savior. That's right, man. It is our prayer we take this message back to those who have yet to accept Jesus and help them to understand you all that there really is no way. And I'm going to say it now and then go into detail in and, and a little bit on this thing, Deja. But the truth of the matter is uh, praise is not the same as worship. It's analogous, but it's not the same as worship. And one of the things we'll be doing today, Brother Coleman, and we will talk about both praise and worship in the word of God today uh, because we need to do both. Amen. Amen. We, we, we need to praise God and we need to, if I say worship. worship. Yeah, we need to praise God and we need to worship him. So we will, Wendy, uh, be covering and talking about both of them today, but they're not the same. And I said that to say this, that anyone... Uh, has the opportunity to praise God. Right. The word says that everything that has breath oh, praise the Lord. That means that even the unsaved can praise Him. Yeah. But 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 if you're unsaved, what you clearly can't do, you can't really worship Him. Because the only way you can worship Him, I'm going to say it now, say it again in a few minutes, you got to be in the Spirit. You, 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 you can't go to that intimacy with God and not be in the Spirit of God. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must. Jesus didn't say it's a good idea. He didn't say here's a thought for you. He didn't say if you feel like it. He didn't say every other. So often he says, if you're going to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so if they're going to worship him, they got to be saved. Yeah. It is our prayer that saints, Christians, those of us who are born again, baptized, believers, those of us who have confessed hope in Jesus Christ, that as we share from the word of God today, Howard, that we would get this thing in our spirit. Watch this. I'm going to say it now and say again, say this again. A few things I have to say again in a few minutes, Bonner. Uh, but that we would really allow God to bring some true deliverance. Yes. Yes. Our name is World Deliverance, yes. which means deliverance needs to be taking place. Yes. And, and, and I know for a fact, I just feel in my spirit, if we're honest with the Lord on this day, you all, then some true deliverance can happen. Amen. It will happen. But we have to get to a point in our lives where we allow him to do. We got to be honest with ourselves when it comes to worship and then allow him to do what's necessary to bring some deliverance into us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And if you need to. Bell, whether there or right here next to Makita, we can get Jordan in here. Amen. I'm so glad to see Jordan this morning. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. We got room for chairs in here. We got room for everybody in this place. Amen. In terms of wheelchairs, every seat's a good seat. Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all up front for like y'all the comedy club, up close and personal. Amen. The difference between me and the comedian, though, I ain't gonna talk about you when you come late. Amen. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. But but that we would we would seriously seriously, though, Alicia, that we would you all uh, as as Christians. Allow Holy Ghost to do what only He can do, uh, and, and open ourselves up so we can really get delivered and, and stop faking the funk and 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 relying on religion because ain't no deliverance in religion. Amen. Well, I'm gonna deal with this thing this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ain't no deliverance in religion. We 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 have to if we're gonna get delivered, we got to have a righteous relationship, and that means you are we have to truly worship Him as only He demands, desires, and dictates and determines that He must be. Everybody say worshipped. Worship. It must be worshipped. There is, you all, there are correlations between the splendor of pregnancy and the nurturing ministry of God's Holy Spirit. There are direct correlations there, you all, between the beauty and, and, and the power of pregnancy and what happens, you all, as we deal with the beautiful, wonderful Holy Spirit of God Himself. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, Dorothy Goins, praise is not the same as worship. Everyone can indeed praise, but you got to be saved if you're going to enter into, if I say worship. worship. And you got to be saved if you're going to enter into worship. Why is that important, Pastor? Because some people think, you all, that worship is purely emotional. Well, praise deals more on the emotional end. Yes, the spirit can be involved, but praise deals more with emotional end because God ain't going to slap you upside your head and make you praise him. All right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. When we was growing up, people, they say people said, catch the Holy Ghost. I guess that's why some people kept their hands open. They want to catch the Holy Ghost. But, but, but just because you praise, then ain't you catching the Holy Ghost. You can determine to pray. That's why everything that has breath can praise the Lord. Because you can make up in your mind to praise him or not. But if you're going to worship him, it comes from the spirit. So it's not just emotional, but the spirit of God himself connects with your spirit. And as you worship him, it's a two-way communication. As you tell him how worthy he is... He tells you how valuable you are. Y'all yes, miss, I'm going to give it to you again. As you tell him how worthy he is, he turns around with Christ and says, you have value in my kingdom. Yes. Bless your name, Jesus, because of everybody say worship. worship. So when you look, when you look, when you look, then you all at pregnancy and at worship and the, the big gift of the Holy Ghost in worship, how he nurtures, we realize you all that all of us need, like a baby, all of us need to be nurtured. Yes. If there's any mothers in this place, and I know there's some moms in this place, one of the things that happens after that baby, and you have a child, that baby is born, that baby for up to 40 weeks has spent the first 40 weeks of its life inside of a wet, warm womb. That's all it knows. It does not know anything else. It's curled up in the fetal position. And sometimes you all, during that pregnancy, it begins to turn so that it can ultimately, you all, get ready to come out the birth canal head first because that's how the baby should come out. And when the baby comes out, Mother Butler, after the doctor cleans the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the ears and does what that test they do and, and lets them lungs come to that baby, they clean the baby, swallow the baby, and put that baby right back on that mom's chest. Because for nine months, 40 weeks, almost 10 months, all that baby has heard is the familiar beating of the mama's heart. And now that it's in the world and don't know what's going on, it's what's happening to me. I don't know what's going on. I'm cold. It's bright. It's, I'm, I'm not wet any longer. What's going on? They wrap it and put it back on the mama. And he settles down because I hear that. The bonding time, Joanna Bond, is so important between a mother and a child because that child needs that nurturing. Well, can I tell somebody right now, when we come and accept Jesus Christ, worship is so important because what worship does for us is worship allows us to hear the heartbeat of God. Yeah. When you first come to him, Karen, you don't know anything about him. When you first come to him, you can be in church your entire life and still don't know anything about him. 
And so we need then that time of worship. Why? Because he nurtures us. He deals with us. He ministers to us during the time. Everybody say worship. worship. During the time of worship. So in pregnancy, you all, as with Holy Spirit, there is life that is developing inside of us long before anybody sees signs of life on the outside of us. Right, right. Wow, I'm going to say that thing one more time. When a woman gets pregnant, Patricia, Charlene, Tillman, what happens is the life inside is developing and growing long before anybody even knows there's life on the outside. A woman is pregnant longer before you even know she's pregnant. I need some mamas to holler back at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't talk about no glow. I'm talking about the show. Not just the glow, but the show. They can glow from some Vaseline on their face. But that showing of the pregnancy, you don't always know she's pregnant till you see. But that they've been pregnant for a while before you see it. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that when Holy Ghost comes and we are saved, he comes inside of us, Cora. He begins to have life inside of us. Even people can't see signs of life outside of us. And this is important, Sally Cross, because too many times we criticize and condemn people because we don't see a change in them when you don't know what's going on inside of somebody. Oh, I ain't getting no help right there, man. Maybe that's the critical group who showed up this morning. Yeah, yeah, that's why we can't criticize people, Howard, about what they do and how they act. Why? Because you don't know how long they've been how they are. You, you, you don't know what they had to deal with to get to where they are right now. And which means then, Ruth Price, that God can be doing the work inside of any one of us long before we see the result of the work outside of us. Now, there ain't no excuse to keep cussing all your life. He's still working on me. <laughs> he, he ain't through with me. Please be patient. You saw that 50 years ago. Wow. Matter of fact, you cuss better now than you did back then. <laughs> now you use your age as excuse to cuss. I'm old and I cuss. What? Nah. <laughs> but in pregnancy, you all, as with uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit and the nurturing ministry of the Holy Spirit, Dorothy Sparks, what happens is at some point, the life that's inside of us begins to move and stretch and do some kicking. You, you, when, when a woman is pregnant, every so often she'll feel a woo. Yeah, yeah, that's the baby kicking right here. Ooh, yeah, that baby is doing something. That, that baby is stretching out. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what happens, you all, when you allow Holy Ghost to nurture you. Ever so often, you, you'll feel something. Yeah. He said, what was it? Well, that's Holy Ghost stretching out inside. Yeah. See, when you get filled by the Holy Ghost, you don't get more of him. He gets all of you. Yeah. Which means he's stretching himself out on the inside of you, Francine. And so if... If we're going to really have him inside of us, at some point he got to stretch. And when he stretches, we feel some kicking. In pregnancy, Dorothy Bell, as with the wonderful nurturing ministry of God's Holy Spirit, watch this, at some point what's in us got to come out, though. Yeah, I'm going to deal with that thing right now. At some point what's inside of us has to come out. My mother, you all, made it no secret, Gloria, uh, to tell people she was born on her grandmama's dining room table. And that's an image. The kitchen, my sister said kitchen table, one of them tables. Whatever one it was, I don't want to eat no more from that table. And that's an image for your tail right there. Oh my God. That she was born on somebody's table, kitchen, dining room, one of them tables you eat from, she was born on it. But here's the thing it did for me, though. Watch, here's the thing it did for me, though, Mother Wilson. It helped me understand. I'm thinking about this. I didn't understand something. Uh, that, that, that in pregnancy, as with the nurturement of the Holy Ghost, when the baby is ready to be born, it don't care where you are. I thought I'd get some help right there. See, a baby don't care if you're at the hospital, in the mall, at the shopping center, at a restaurant. A baby don't care if you're at the dining room table, in the kitchen, the kitchen table, in the dining room. A baby don't care about any of that stuff. All a baby knows is it's time for me to come out of you, and that's what's about to happen right now. Well, when we really allow Holy Ghost to have his way, he don't care where we are. He says, wherever you are, you can worship me. Wherever you are, I want people to know I'm inside of you. Because when he really feels you, it don't matter as you 
what's going on, who's looking at us. See, up until then, we don't want nobody to see us. But when we really allow to have his way, we don't care who knows he fills us up. And when we come together, corporate worship, this place is the birthing center. Every time we come together, Daphne, something should be birthed out of us. Woo, I'm going to get that one more. I like that right there. I'm going to say that thing one more time, Sarah Bada. Every time we come together, something, life should be birthed out of us. Not just something, but something living life should be birthed out of us every time we come together. That's one of the reasons why it's important that we don't forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Why not, Pastor? Because, watch this, because not every place is a birthing center. And so when we all come together, the what a time, what a time, what a time. It can be when all of God should get together, life should come out of this place. First thing we see in our text and you all going to put that first point up. The first thing we see in our text and you all is that worship involves using our, everybody say voice. voice. Worship involves using our voice. Now here, I want you to notice something, you all. We were in Psalm uh, number 73, and this song is real practical, Elder Bonner. Now what it does for us, it provides an account of the internal conflict the psalmist had with the strong temptation of the butler to envy the prosperity of wicked people. He looked, Makita, at how wicked people seem to be getting ahead, and he got an attitude. And when we read some of these verses, we're going to see, sorry, that some of us feel the same way this psalmist has felt. And so abruptly then, when he says in verse number one of Psalm 73, God is truly good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. What he does here, Francine, is he's reminded himself. He says, I'm going to tell you in a second why I opened this psalm up like this. Because I, I was in my feelings for a moment. I, I, I was feeling some type of way. See, feeling some type of way didn't just start in 2017. Thousands of years ago, though, Kaya, the psalmist was feeling some type of way. And he said, so as a, and so to check myself, to check myself, Melody, what I did was, he says, I had to start off by reminding myself that God is truly good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. Now, this is important, you all, and it's significant because what he does, you all, is he admits the fact that the more he thought about the prosperity of the wicked, the more upset he became. The more he looked around at these sparks and how wicked people seemed to be getting ahead, the more he was in his feelings. The more he looked through Christ and how wicked people, those who didn't serve God like he was serving God, but yet they seemed to be doing good, seemed to be doing all right, the more he got angry and the more despondent he became. So he says, I'm going to write this psalm then, Jayla, to check myself. And every so often, we need to be honest to check ourselves. He said, I'm going to write this psalm and to check myself to make certain that I don't shift my focus from God to people. And let me say this parenthetically right now. I'm going to say it now and I might not say it later. But, but the more you focus on people, the more you start praising people. Y'all didn't like them, I'm going to say it anyhow. The more you focus on people and problems, the more you go praise people and problems. And the more you focus on God, the more you start praising God. And so the psalmist here, Karen, says, I got to focus on God and not people or problems so I can put my praise where it belongs. So he says, you all, he says that God is good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. And then he says, but I had almost stopped believing. I thought I'd get about 10 people right there who said, Pastor, you said nothing that said but a word right there, because I know already where you're going with this one. I'd almost stopped believing. I'd almost lost my faith. The next verse, verse 3, because I was jealous of proud people, I saw wicked people doing good. I saw wicked people doing well. I saw people who don't tie driving new cars. Y'all yeah, gonna be real this Sunday morning y'all gonna pretend. I, I saw people who don't worship you or buy new houses. I saw people who don't even care about, they don't even know their kids' name. They live in the same house with them kids and don't know their kids' name. Their kids doing real good. Every child they got got a scholarship. 
scholarship and I'm trying to scrap money together to pay week by week for my kid to go to school. He said, I was upset, Cato, because I saw wicked people doing well. Next verse, he was upset because he said, they ain't suffering, they're healthy, they're strong. I'm at the doctor every other week and wicked people are running marathons. I, I need some real folk with me this morning. Because the psalmist is talking to somebody already. He says, verse number five, they don't have troubles like the rest of us. They don't have problems like other people, Rita. He says, and I was so upset about this thing. I, I was despondent. I, I, I'd almost lost my faith. Despite the body, everything the psalmist noticed, he says, I kept my sanity by remembering the fact that those who are not with God and decide not to be with God now, they will be remain apart from him forever. He said, I kept my sanity, Makita, by remembering that if somebody's not with God right now and they never get with God, they will be separated from him. Somebody say forever. forever. Yeah, forever. And what Prince said, Francine, is forever is a mighty long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be separated from him forever. He said, but also, Rita, I realized that those who are with God now and remain with God will stay with him. Somebody say forever. forever. They will stay with him forever. He said, that's how I kept my sanity, Cora, by realizing that when I'm with him, then I will always be good and can stay with him. Watch this. Too often, and here comes opportunity, Fozzie, for some real deliverance to take place. Too often, we only focus you all on running away from problems and not running toward the Lord. Too often, we focus on what's wrong and not what God has done right. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody already. Too often, we withdraw from what God is doing instead of availing ourselves for him to do what he wants to do in our lives right now. Okay, let me take it a step further. Take it a step further. When you look in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, what you see two things happen in Dorothy Sparks. One is God always draws people towards himself. And the enemy always drives people away from God. And the only time, hear me well when I tell you this, the only time God drives away is when Satan is in charge. Wow. God don't eat even people are wicked. He don't drive people away. He drives the spirit away. Okay, okay. I told you this is a time if we can be honest with ourselves right now, some deliverance can come. Because too many times when it's time for deliverance, we look at everybody else. And we can't ever get delivered because we don't want God to deal with but let me back up. We don't want to deal with the real us. And because we don't want to deal with the real us, then God says, as much as I want to deliver you, I can't deliver you because you keep pretending it ain't you. you I'm going to deal with this thing anyhow. New Sunday, new place, same sermon. I got to deal with this thing right now. Watch this. So when you read in Genesis, even in the beginning, Adams, what the Lord did is the spirit of the Lord would show up in the Garden of Eden on a daily basis, and he would come and have time with Adam and Eve. He was drawing them to himself. But when they allowed Satan to be in charge of one, in Genesis 3, when they sinned, he had to drive them out. Yeah. And it wasn't because of them. He said, I'm driving you out because if you eat from the tree of life in sin, you will stay in sin forever. So I'm doing this to save your life. <laughs> Okay, some of y'all still ain't feeling me. What Satan did in Isaiah 14, Satan says, Kendo, I will exalt myself to the throne of the Most High. I'm going to be like God. I'm going to take God's place. And what God does is God says, no, actually, I'm going to drive you out. I will send you to hell, to the very sides of hell, because God only drives Jayla when Satan is in charge. Y'all still feeling me? Jesus says, Dorothy Goins, come draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Because he always draws. Jesus says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I need some people to help this morning. I will what? Draw all men unto me. Yet when Peter allowed Satan to control him, he looked at Peter and spoke to Satan and get behind me, Satan. Because he never drives people away, he drives the hell away. Y'all with me so far? 
Y'all, because I'm about to say something, it's going to help somebody in, in a second. So watch this. So anytime, anytime we find it easy to leave where God is moving, it ain't God who told us to leave. See, y'all got quiet in the church this morning. That, that's why this is the right word, the right time, and the right place. Way back in November last year, God gave word for this day. He said, that's the word people need to hear right now, Howard. He said, because the people, the service I want to leave, but ain't God who told me to leave God. Because uh -huh. God never tells you to leave when he's moving. Y'all ain't like, I'm going to come talk over here. Maybe y'all can wake up and say, God will never tell you to leave where he is. If anybody ever come from leaving where God is, that's a sign of uneasiness in your spirit. If somebody finds it easy to move back from the fire, that's a sign something ain't right in your spirit. Why not, Pastor? Because God always says, come closer to my fire. Come closer to my fire. Come closer. I just showed you. Matter of fact, the last thing Jesus says in Revelation 22, he says, surely I come quickly. In other words, I'm going to draw you even to the end of the world. So he can't spend forever saying come, and then we go and think God's involved in that. God's never involved if we decide to leave this fire. Now, why is that important, Pastor? Because when we elect not to worship, God ain't never told nobody not to worship. Y'all with me so far? God has never told anyone not to worship. Remember, God is a spirit. Worship is a place of intimacy with God. And no matter what goes on in our lives, he would never tell you not to worship. Even when people get on your nerves, he don't say not worship. Remember what I just told you, he told Peter. He didn't tell Peter to leave, he told Satan to leave. And then when Peter in Luke chapter 22 told Jesus, I'm going to die with you. And Jesus said, no, actually you're going to deny me. He said, I ain't never going to deny you. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you to do a sift you this week. He wants to drive you away from me. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you get changed, help somebody else come closer to me. Why? Because I will never tell you to leave where I am. I will always have Satan to leave, but not you leave. I'm trying to help somebody in this place this morning. See, because we can't get delivered because we keep thinking it's everybody else's fault. And if deliverance is going to come, Kimberly Cato, we got to be honest and do what Michael Jackson said. And y'all tripping on Michael, but I, he said something good. Look at the man in the mirror. You ain't got to go to Neverland, but forget the man. Look at the man in the mirror. Y'all holler back at a preacher this morning. See, we, we keep trying to throw the message out with the people. Oh. You better, if you want to get rid of them, do what you got to do. But remember them and look at the man in the mirror and say, God, I got to ask him to change his ways. Because yeah. God ain't never told somebody to leave his place where his fire is. It's only the enemy that does that. And so one of the ways then you all, if we're going to stay and be whom God has called us to be, then we have to talk about the goodness of God. Because when we don't talk about his goodness, Patricia Hall, we wind up praising problems. Anything you praise, you magnify. And unfortunately, Dorothy Bell, we'll make our problems, we'll magnify our problems so large until that's all we can see. That's why when you praise God, you magnify him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. When you start praising him, all of a sudden what happens with Christ is he becomes bigger than your problems. Yes. And the best way we can do this is what's called psalmic worship. Psalmic worship for the definition of psalmic worship refers to the heartfelt, enthusiastic, expressive worship found in the Bible and described in detail in the book of Psalms. That is, somebody say, psalmic worship. Psalmic. Yeah, that you all is psalmic worship. And it's during the time of psalmic worship that we can remember intentionally mother butler if he never does anything else he's already done more than enough for me I, I need some more than enough saints with me this morning real quick how many can say he's never done anything else see that's that's when you start magnifying him you if he never did anything else he's so large in my life for me that he's done more than enough for me and that's where the psalmist got to Deja in verse number 28. That's why he says that he says in verse 28. He says, gonna put that verse up there. He says to them, you all, you go, y'all found it. Okay, thank you. I am close to God 
and that is good. The Lord is my protection. I will tell all that you have done. He says here, Karen, after looking at what the wicked have done, I decided to shift my attention back to Jesus, back to God himself, and I'm going to tell everything he's done. Why? Because when I think of the goodness of God, The wicked still cross me. Yes, they are. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Yeah. See, that's why, that's, that's why, that, that's why, Josephine, I can't leave where he is. Because there's going to be all kinds of people. Y'all missed that right there. I'm going to say it one more time. How can I want all kinds of people saved and I keep leaving all kinds of people behind? Yeah. Oh, he got real quiet now. See, I, I can't keep saying I want him to save anybody. But then I leave the people who upset me. Yeah. The psalmist realized, Makita, that if I'm really going to disciple and help people understand, he said that I got to stay close to God. Because if I'm not close to God, I'll leave God and everybody else behind. So as we, as we worship God then, Felicia, one of the things we do is we use our voice to, everybody say speak. speak. We use our voice to speak. And as we worship, we use our voice to speak. Psalm number 34, verse 1 says, I will praise the Lord when... It's up there for y'all to read at all times. And then it says, you all, that uh, his praise will always be on my lips. Now, y'all got to get this because it's interesting right here when he says this thing, Kendall, because he says that he will give God blessing and honor and praise, Angie, in every situation at all times. Now, all times is not just your all times in terms of all hours of the day. All times with Christ means even when I don't feel like it. Yes. See, 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 we, we too often, we have our blessed Lord at sometimes. Y'all quiet on the preaching. I, I, I will bless the Lord most of the time. I will bless the Lord on payday. Now he's, I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord when my income tax check comes. No, he said, I will bless the Lord, Karen, at all times. And we don't think about all times being sick times and bad times, depressed times, talked about times. But I will bless the Lord at all times. If you're going to face it, you might as well praise him in it. Because, because you all, that, 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 that's what happens. We realize the praise that belongs to God should always be heard coming out of our lips. The problem we have, Rasan, is that some people only experience bad things because they would talk about bad things. Put, put up Proverbs 18, please. Yes, yeah, some people only experience bad things because they would always talk about bad things. Yeah, and, and so the law of attraction says what you talk about is what you're going to get. So what does it say? Proverbs 18 to 21. What you say can mean life or death. The King James says death or life is in the power of the tongue. Those who seek with care will be rewarded. Some people always got something bad happening because all they talk about is bad stuff. No, I'm telling the truth in this place. Tell the truth, shame the devil right now, David. If you want to see something different, you got to start speaking some different stuff. I'm calling it as I see it. But what I see it is the Lord is good all the time. No, come on, somebody. Remember, you have to magnify him and stop magnifying your problems. So we use our voice, you all, as we praise and lead into worship to, to, to speak, you all, of the goodness of God. And the question is, what are you speaking? What are you speaking? What are you saying? That, that makes a difference in your spirit. But, but as we use our voice, Francine, we use our voice to sing. Psalm number 47, verse number 6. Watch this. It says, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. Some of y'all remember years ago the song that said, we sing praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. We sing praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. Then we said, give him glory. Why? Because he is the king of kings. Give him glory. Because he is the king of kings. The song, it came from the song right there, Jeanette. The song kept saying, sing praises over and over and over again because that's what we need to be doing Kendall we need to be singing his praises and stop singing the blues we know a whole lot of when my baby left me and what's wrong with me but how many can sing praises to the Lord oh my god oh my god oh 
my God. Matter of fact, one of the ways we build each other in worship, Karen, is by singing praises. Put up Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, you all, verse 16. It says, let the teaching of Christ live in you. Everybody say richly. Richly. Use all wisdom to teach and instruct each other. And here's what it says. How do you teach each other, Bell? It says right there, by singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Literally what it says, Josephine, is one of the ways we disciple people is by singing with them. Y'all yes. yes. missed that. Yes. See, when you are singing, doing praise and worship, ain't about your voice. Ain't yes. about your voice. And let me say this, it also ain't just about the rhythm of the music. I ain't talking about nobody when I say this. I got to tell it like a T.I.E. is no Howard. That's why certain songs we don't sing in our church. Because unfortunately, certain songs rehearse a bad history and don't talk about the goodness of God. Yes. See, certain songs only promote misery and not the glory of God. So we leave. So during that time, we should be building each other up. We actually become depressed. Because we singing and clapping about how broke we are. I ain't got no money, praise the Lord. I ain't got no money, praise the Lord. My lights just got turned off, praise the Lord. My lights just got turned off, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We shout out for misery. Do you not understand? Do you not understand? That Satan led the angelic host in heaven? I need y'all to holler back at me for a second. So Satan knows how to use the music to bring you down. Come on, somebody. He knows how to use the music to mess your spirit up. And, and, and so why, that's why we sing songs in our church that exalt God and talk about how good he is so we're ready to know he's an awesome, he is a good, good father. Before somebody dare say, well, pastor, that's our history. Don't forget our history. Well, let me, before you talk about your history, let me tell you about his story. Because yeah, yeah. before you got history, he had a story. What's his story? Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Before you had history, he had a story. And let me tell you right now, God in his story ain't never been broke. No, y'all got quiet on me right there. See, if you were talking about history, go back to real history. Before your history, he had history. And I'd rather sing songs about his history because his history can help me right now. Too many times we try to hold on to somebody else's narrative of us. And we skip what God said about us. I can't do nothing, but he never told you that. So we sing songs, Daphne, that exalt him. We exalt him. Oh my God, let me move on. Let, 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 me, let me move on. Let me move on. I got some more to give. Not a lot of time to give it in here, Mother Coleman. And, 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 so, and so stop singing songs of misery and sing songs of your victory. You should tweet that or, or post that, Kimberly Cato. Stop singing songs of mystery, misery and sing songs of your victory. Go on, go on the next, go on the next one, go on the next one. We worship, watch this, using our voice to shout. So as we worship, we use our voice. Everybody say shout. The psalm that says in Psalm 27 to 6, my head, Patricia, is higher than my enemies around me. I will offer joyful sacrifices in his holy tent. I will sing, DJ, and praise the Lord. David, who writes this psalm, mother, is confident, watch this, that not only will he be restored and placed above his enemies, he says, but I realize that my enemies will clearly be put under me. See, just because you are elevated, foes, they don't mean they're under you. See, you, you can go higher and still have some stuff above you. He says, but I'm going to be higher than my enemies. Because as he elevates me, he's taking me higher, David, than every enemy around me. So he says, I will make a joyful sacrifice. The joyful sacrifice ought to mean I'm going to shout to the Lord. I'm going to say this one more time. The joyful sacrifice, Gloria, means I'm going to shout to the Lord. I'm the, Because I know he's going to elevate me, I'm going to shout in advance. 
Y'all still ain't feeling the preacher, y'all. Y'all still ain't feeling the preacher. Let, 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 let me help you, because then I got I got to move on. Let me let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. How, how, how the Lord let, let me understand it like, like this. If you've ever been on the street and there's an ambulance that is riding in front of you or, or better yet behind you or, or coming toward you, watch this. When the siren is not on, it's a regular vehicle. Which means when you get to a stoplight, the ambulance behind you gotta wait for the light to turn green. When, when you get ready to turn, if, 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 if it misses the light, Felicia, and you turn, it got ready for the next green light to turn. Uh-huh. Which means then, Wendy, when, when you drive it, you ain't got to pull a while because it's just a regular vehicle because the sirens are not on. But as soon as it has an emergency and the siren comes on, yeah, yeah. the ambulance Howard takes authority over everything around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody know I'm going already with this thing. And because it takes authority, Ruth Price, then anything in front of it got to pull over. Because it takes authority, Ruth Price, anything coming towards it got to pull over. Until it goes back. Can I tell somebody right now, stop suffering in silence and turn your sirens on in this place. No, somebody turn your siren on. Stop suffering in silence. Turn on your siren. Because every time your siren comes on, tell the captain. Every time you turn your siren on, shout. Every time you shout, can somebody give God some fuck in this place? No, come on, take authority, take authority, take authority, take authority, take authority, take authority. It's time for something to get the hell out of your way. Why? I'm taking authority in this place right now. Hallelujah. High five somebody and say, get it out of the way, get it out of the way, get it out of the way. Somebody thank God some stuff got to get out of your way when you turn your siren on and you praise and worship God. Oh, okay, 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 quickly, quickly, quickly though. Watch this, go put the next point up there because we worship involves using our hands. And so, and so as we worship then, uh, 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 Starisha, we use our hands to lift. And so, so, and so it says here, Nalisha, Psalm 63 and 4, I will praise you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in prayer to your name. What David had already done here, uh, Starisha, is he had already pursued God with everything he has. And now he declares, Ruth Price, what he's going to do is as long, he says, he says, as long as I live, as long as I got breath in my body, I'm going to lift my hands. Some, some of y'all gonna get the thing in a second. As long as I got breath in my body, I'm gone. Now, what he says is this, Felicia. He says in prayer and praise, or both in prayer and praise, I will. Yeah, that, that word lift comes from a Hebrew word, NASA. Now, now some of y'all may have heard this little, this, little, this little entity the United States has down in Houston called NASA. Yeah, the Hebrew for NASA means to lift up. Some of y'all missed that. Every time, Angie, the spacecraft takes off, they says, now Houston, we have liftoff. Some of you get into your spirit. Hey, hey, see, let me say it. Let me say it different. Let me say it different. Every time, Kimberly Cato, a spaceship takes off, they say, Houston, we have liftoff. The Hebrew word he uses here in the Bible is NASA. To lift. Yeah, yeah. Can somebody have some lift up in this place right now? You ain't got to go to the moon to have lift off. But right, we lift. This lift here, Wendy, is with our hands facing outward. This, when we when we told our God, this is a sign of submission. But we lift like he says here, Dorothy Bell, this is a sign of surrender. And ever so often, Gloria, we need to tell God, I surrender. I'm dealing with some hell, and I surrender. If you really go worship, I'm dealing with some problem, I surrender. My kids need help, so I surrender. My marriage is jacked up, I surrender. My boss got on that last nerve. I... Can somebody surrender to God right now? No, oh, come on, somebody surrender to the Lord right now. He says, I surrender. I surrender all to you. I surrender right now as I praise, as I worship him. That's why we cannot forsake this 
consider of ourselves together. Why? Because look across this room at people. Everybody lift up their hands and surrender right now. Look at the people who surrender in this place right now. Imagine what would happen if saints all over start surrendering. I'm tired of doing it my way, I surrender. I'm tired of fighting you. I'm tired of kicking against the prick, I surrender. I'm tired of being argumentative, I surrender. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I surrender to the only one who can change my situation. See, real deliverance comes with Christ. We surrender to what he can do. That means we may not always understand or like it, but God, I surrender. So even when I'm wrong, see, I can't never get help if I can't admit I'm ever wrong. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. As we worship, though, we we'll use our hands to play instruments. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord, Psalm 33 and 2. Praise the Lord on the harp. Make music on a, to him on a 10-string lyre. Lyre. Uh, sing a new song to him. Play well and joyfully. Now watch this, you all. Because even before Josephine, David was anointed to be king. He was a shepherd watching his daddy's sheep in the field, worshiping God on a harp. Y'all miss him and give it to you again. He didn't wait until he was anointed Jeanette, to start worshiping. He always, he, he was an OG worshiper. David said, I worship from way back. I always been worshiping God. I ain't, you, you, you saw me in the palace worshiping, but when I was out there surrounded by sheep, do do I was worshiping God. He didn't wait till he got anointed to worship. And the devil is a lie when people feel you got to wait till you anointed to worship. No, baby, you can worship right now. Okay, okay. It was worship that positioned David into the king apprentice program while he was a shepherd watching sheep in the pasture because he worshipped Joanna, not because he was anointed, but because he worshipped, he wound up in the palace learning how to be kingly before he even became king. So he got anointed as a worshipper. And he went to the palace as an anointed worshiper, and when he became king, he knew what to do in the palace, Daphne. Why? Because of his worship in the field. Put the first Samuel chapter 6, and let me show you this in scripture. Saul, King Saul's servant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is troubling you. The next verse, give us command to look for someone who can play the harp. And so when the evil spirit from God gets on you, he going to play and you going to feel better. Put the next verse up. And one of the servants said, look what he says, I've seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem playing the harp. Somebody missed that right there. I'm looking for somebody who can do something, Makita. And he said, I saw a young boy worshiping. I'm trying to get somebody to get this in their spirit in that. He didn't say, I saw somebody anointed. He said, I saw somebody worshiping. Well, remember, he was in the field worshiping, which means he didn't need an audience to worship God. Y'all still ain't liking the preacher this right here. He said, I've seen somebody playing the harp. He's brave. He's courageous. A good speaker. He's handsome. And the Lord is with him. Put the next verse up, please. And when the evil spirit from God troubled Saul, look what David did. He took his harp and began to play. And the evil spirit would leave him. And Saul would feel better. Why? Because he was, somebody say, a worshiper. Because Dorothy Bell, he used his hands to play instruments. And because of that, God opened doors for him. God told me years ago how he said, worship me and watch what I do. Oh, yes. Can somebody, like, I, wait, 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 I can't do me a favor. Just, just jump on and play a beat over there real quick. Yeah, you and Kai just play a beat. Because I need y'all to understand something. When we make some music to God, great things happen. Yeah. No, no, they're going to play a beat, just, just a quick beat over there, and let people understand that when instruments are played, because while people are trying to make music to move people, worshipers make music to move heaven. And I'd rather heaven move my kids than people move any day of the week. Because when heaven moves, hell has to fall. When heaven moves, lives turn around. When heaven moves, hands are lifted up. When heaven moves, tears are dried up. When
what happens, Karen, when we worship God with the instruments, we worship God like this, we prepare for what's called a Kairos moment. Most of us, all of us deal in Kronos. That is chronological time, Kronos. But God deals in Kairos. A Kairos moment, you all, is when heaven invades earth at just the right time. Kronos is chronological. So we used to go in one, two, three, four, five. That's not how heaven operates, Angie. While we go in one, two, three, four, five, God simply says, now. I am going to help somebody. Somebody got that in their spirit right there. While we go in six, seven, eight, nine, ten, God simply says, now. While we say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, God says now. Can somebody thank God for the now in your life? No, somebody thank God for a now moment. Thank you that now you're here. Now you're redeeming. Now you're saving. Now you're delivering. Now you're making free. Now, my God, now. Okay, 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 but, but watch this, watch this. As we worship, we use our hands to clap. Psalm 47 and 1 says, clap your hands on you people. Shout to God with joy. The reason the psalm is right here, of course, is all people. And I get this now. He wasn't just talking about all the people in front of him, Dorothy Goins. He was literally saying all people. Now you got to get this because this Jeanette is an Old Testament which something is only about Judaism. But here's the thing. When he said all people, he would also talk about the Gentiles. Y'all missed that. What he said, Makita, is this. God is not just the God of the Jews. He's the God of everybody. I'm going to talk to somebody over here who got that thing in your spirit. He's not just the God of the Jews, Francine. He's the God of everybody. Can somebody think God, he can be your God also. Yeah. Yeah. He's not just the Jewish God. He's God for all people. Now, this is significant, Jeanette, because when they would clap during this time, they clapped for two reasons. One was the anointing of a king, and secondly, for the coronation of a king. In other words, when a king, when a person was anointed to be king, everybody would clap. But then when they would crown, coronated king, everybody would clap. Because what was signifies Baal was the now and the next of the king. So now you've been anointed and next you king indefinitely. And so when the saints clap Ruth Price, what we're doing the same thing. We're clapping because he's the now our king. But guess what? He reigns forever. And so every time I clap my hands, Kion, I'm not just clapping because he's with me right now. I'm clapping because forever, ever, forever, ever, 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 he reigns forever. Can somebody give God a clap? No, somebody put them hands together and clap because he's king right now. But clap because he reigns forever. Y'all can do better than that. Somebody put them hands together and clap like the king is walking in here right now. But, but, but then, but then you want this, but, but, but then I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. Worship involves using our posture. So we worship God, you all. We use our posture to stand. Psalm 134, Mother Butler, it says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night... The reason they had to stand Adams, get this now. They, they, first of all, the reason they were there at nighttime Adams is because it was the job of the Levites and, and, and the scribes to clean and protect the temple at night. The temple had no windows, Karen. And so people, thieves could break in because they believed to bring in expensive stuff into the temple, Fozzie. They had gold and all kind of stuff in there. And so thieves would try to break in. So the scribes and the Levites would be there overnight to protect it. But so they were there at night. But why they had to stay in Murdis Johnson is because there were no chairs in the temple. Because the work was never done. The only one who ever had a right to sit in the temple was God himself. And because God was present, then people did not insult him by sitting in front of him. 
Y'all wow. cute, cute right there. Wow. People didn't insult him when the king wow. was there. They didn't sit and look at the king like the king needed to bow before them. Wow. They said the king is just we all got to. Somebody get in this spirit in a second. See, too many times we talk about what's wrong with us, but the king says, sometimes when you try to stand, I empower you to do just that. And so when the king comes in, I, I worship him, Charlene, by. Because I have seen to him that king, you're worthy of everything, Lord, so I. Can somebody do yourself a favor and just stand in front of the king right now and all the king in respect to the king and praise of the king. We stand because the king alone is worthy. The king keeps us moving forward. So we behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which on Sunday morning, April the 7th, 2019, can... to bow. The scripture says you are. That come, let us worship him. Let us bow down and kneel before the one who made us. They stood for him out of respect. But when the king started moving, they began to bow. When the king moved past him, they began to bow. So you stand when he comes in the room.
the middle of surrender with your hands lifted. Right. Lift up your hands. I'm going to read the challenge to us. I'm going to read the challenge to us. Those who watch, you lift up your hands also. Hallelujah. Participate with us this far. Come on, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go there. Go there with it. 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'll get you up for a second, boy. Hallelujah. We know what they have this. That praise of hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey! Hallelujah! Bless your holy name. I told you this. If you allow a real deliverance to come today, deliverance cannot come when I honor what I say. God ain't never told anybody not to worship. And He's never told anybody not to be where His spirit is present. He's never said, don't be where our spirit is present. That ain't good. Which means then, the decline of the church ain't biblical. The fact that people don't worship ain't biblical. The fact that people don't come are not easy not to be, it's not biblical. We mean, we gotta stop accepting something that's not Bible. Stop being okay with something he ain't saying. You ain't got to rationalize with nobody. Stand on the word of God, that's it.
challenges out. Worship should be an experience in which we celebrate and not just an event we attend. The challenge this week then is to commit to making this first step. You see it up there. We as every member of our church do three things. We as every member of our church to worship God, be involved in the group, and serve other people. And because of that, then, um, because of that, that first step every member should do. That's why this series was Step Up Your Game. Where are you? Where are you on these three steps we've asked every member to do? Are you worshiping? First of all, are you in the company of the saints on a consistent basis? If we really expect that God is going to add to, to his kingdom, then worship shouldn't be, the attendance shouldn't be optional. It shouldn't be what I sometimes still do, sometimes I don't. Because he's good all the time. Come on, somebody. He's good all the time. So, so it's not optional for us to do this. And when it's really a, when really a life that we live, then every Sunday comes it ain't a question if I'm going. And I really can't say I want his kingdom to grow if I'm not if I'm not participating in growing the kingdom even by being in the place of worship. Remember what I told you all? God draws, Satan drives. God has never driven anyone away from his church, ever. Ever. Never. Even people talk about church hurt, God ain't hurt you. Don't play with me. If that's the case, Jesus had no disciples. All 
called him her Jesus. He'd walk away from all them. He was God. He ain't walk away from them. He ain't walk away from you. Amen. Every time we walk away, we saying we perfect. Ain't nobody else perfect but us. Y'all ain't like that right there. That's the truth. When we walk away, we're saying we're the only ones perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but us. That's what we're saying, though. That's literally what that means. Because if I wasn't saying, watch this, because if I can acknowledge that other people are not perfect, like God, no, I'm not perfect, I don't walk away from his church because of imperfect people. Come on, some of y'all, come on, let's be real. We so busy, I want to offend people that we offend God every time. So I care more about not offending you, but I offend him every time. When I was growing up, they said, you ain't got a heaven or hell to send me to. So ain't no way I'm going to be scared of you getting upset with me if I'm offending the one who woke me up this morning. The fact that any of us can be saved means he says, I can take you just as you are. Works and everything. Come on, somebody. He took us just as we are. Uncombed hair, bad breath. Gas ate them beans last night, got bad gas. Don't y'all play with me. It's too hot to be fired like that up in there, but the man with and all that. And what did God do? God take us just as we are. Now, I, I, I'm being funny, but I'm being for real, Nigel. It's a blessing. Seriously, he takes us just as we are. So, 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 so we, so we can't reject others just as they are. Cause that ain't God. So the prayer to y'all, and if we are gonna get people saved, it's gonna be all kinds of people coming. Amen. You know what I just told you? If we're really gonna get people saved, it means Makita, all kinds of people gotta come. Even some people that just on, on, in traditional sense, we'd be like, oh, I don't know about them. But how are they going to get saved? Because of some of the people that know about us. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about the us sanctified in church and hallelujah us. I'm talking about that leather wearing us. I ain't supposed to talk about that. I'm sorry. Who told the pastor about my leather? <laughs> he ain't supposed to know nothing about that. Some people got that secret closet. It ain't for prayer. Anyway, anyway, this first step with the goal, you all, of leading other people to corporate celebration each Sunday, we should want at least 50 souls to come this quarter. Amen. 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 Which means, you all, we got to do our part. Amen. We got to do our part. Heads about eyes are closed. Heads about eyes are closed.